This week, we're looking at nest boxes and the maintenance of nest boxes. You may have a nest box. What do you do with it after you've got it? So that's what we're looking at, maintaining the nest boxes you have. Stay tuned. Maintaining, 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 maintenance of nest boxes. This week I thought we would look at the maintenance of nest boxes. Jasmine's been doing nest box maintenance for most of the week and she'll tell you she's gotten the hang of it. We no longer maintain the nest boxes every year kind of every three or four years and it's been about that three or four years since I did the round but we've since doubled the amount of nest boxes so it used to take a day now it's more like three four almost five days to maintain all the almost 300 nest boxes so we've had a lot of birds come back lately and that's why the nest boxes is a little bit of a an er emergency just to get it done because it happened so fast uh, usually we do it up to the early May, but a lot of birds have come in the last week. So I wanted to see what do we do and also what details of design make that it's important to, to do it that way. So let's go see. So let's go over the material first. We got a little, uh, we call this a screwdriver, right? Um, for the little screws here, we get, I don't know how this is called in English. It's a beehive tool. Beehive tool. Yeah, to scrape. To scrap uh, everything under. And then I got some screws, long ones and uh, small ones. So a three inch and a two inch screw. If you're in the US, always use Robertson head or square head so that when you put it on your drill, the screw can actually hold, it will stay. So that is so helpful when you're dealing with things like nest boxes and you're having to put in screws without them falling. I must say, those green ones are a little better right now than brown ones. Little details, but we do have brown screws, but the green ones are nicer because if they fall on the ground, they tend to be a little easier to see than the brown ones. Yeah. Uh, they both ideally they'd be fluorescent orange mm -hmm. but you do want to be careful because whatever you drop you'll tend to find with the tractor tire some point in the future all right so i put my glasses on in case there's something in there little gloves we're gonna knock first just in case also maybe they go out if they're inside Let's see. The other thing is when you take the screw out here, it's really nice to leave it in. When you take this screw out, leave it in so you don't have to be handling a screw. It stays in the wood. Again, the idea of having all the holes on the same side means you don't have to look around where they are. So that's a nice little feature. But this one seems empty. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more in this one. You want the nest box to kind of look, if you're gonna clean it out, you want it to look like a woodpecker has just, just used it last year. And a woodpecker will usually uh, nest just on wood chips or wood shavings. Not shavings, because they don't make shavings, but they do make chips. So we use uh, shavings, pine shavings. Buy it by a big bag. Big bag lasts us three, four years. Got it. So I put just just a little bit. It's just to be about a centimeter high. It's good to keep the to keep the humidity out of the wood. This thing. So I'm gonna shake it a little bit so it goes evenly everywhere. And then. Obviously, if these are on a tree. You can't shake the tree, so yeah. in this case it's on a post, it's easy, it. but yeah. we just tap it if we have to, to level it out a little bit. And then I leave the screw just a little bit out, so I know that this is where I open it, and it's also not too tight, so it's easier to open it 
when I will need to or will need to. And, and that's it. So that's the that's all we're doing. But this one was an easy one. There's some that are a lot more complicated to know what to do with it. Let's do some of the other ones. There's a lot around here. So just going from one to the other, try to organize a logical route. So in this case, we have the nest boxes tend to be on posts that, that are in a row. And so just zigzag through the orchard, going one row, doing these, going to the next series there and walking through them. And there's a lot of nest boxes. It takes a while to get through them all. All right, because safety first. <laughs> Little glasses in case of having, like we had before, a squirrel inside that we could just jump out or a bird. And also, it's windy today, so when taking things out, if it goes in the ice, then you're not really as much as productive and it can hurt and so many things. And this is for if the dust is coming. And there's been a bit of dust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dusty job on a windy day. And then to know what, try to know what used it, but deciding do we empty it or not. You don't have to empty them every year, but when you see it tends to be a little bit wet or it has been wet, then uh, it's good to clean it out because the more compost accumulates in the bottom, which means at one point it was used and there was some manure addition, then uh, if it's got a lot of compost material, we like to clean it out because that's what will rot the floor the fastest if there's water that gets in. It doesn't seem like there's a hole in there. No, certainly not actively used. You will see active tends to show fresh material has been brought in. But that was used last year because there's a full layer of feathers. We try to keep the material, sometimes we put it in a bucket, sometimes we keep it around. Because in this one doesn't have, there are... Uh, spiders that use the nest to lay their eggs and they haven't all come out yet the spiders so we like that the spiders can come out and uh, little baby spiders run around the orchard <laughs> oh, it's really tight so what used it it's not always obvious uh, typically Feathers usually means tree swallows. They love feathers. Uh, that, that could have been them, but that was used for more than one year. That's probably not all from the one year. This one has no egg cases in it, so we'll put it in our compost bucket. Good manure. <laughs> then we just scrape the bottom a little bit more with the hive tool, just so it comes out. Uh, it doesn't have to be clean. I've heard people freak out about cleaning it with bleach and no don't do that no i'm saying don't don't <laughs> clean it with bleach, be bleach. Uh, just a scraping getting the, the compostable material off birds that are looking for a clean nest box that's what they'll choose some that want a nest that's more filled then we try to vary it up not to have all cleaned so we do keep some with material from the previous year Sometimes you can see just through that crack there, there's really not much there. So this one, I, you can almost pass it, it you, unless there's something to discover. But we, we tend to be go over all of them just to be systematic about it. So open it up. You can see some spider nests that have uh, come out. Those, those have come out already. There's some moth cases oh there's some eggs of uh gypsy moth eggs so we leave them we don't take them out gypsy moth supposed to be a pest but uh in french it's spongeuse we let, just leave them the birds will take care of them actually they don't mind having an extra helping of caterpillars What's that, Chipmunk in this hole. <laughs> Here's a little feature. Jasmine found out that if you have a cat, this is her cat, and Jetpack here has a little, a little skirt around her neck. 
and so far it's working really well. This is something that's been found to work quite well to prevent the birds from getting caught as easily. Bells work too, but these little collars, because they're colorful, the birds really spot it well. So I have this little bucket here with all the things I took out of the previous that's, ones. That's a good one to show. If you have something like this, really branches, that's sure that it was a uh, house wren. House wren are the only ones that use twigs and sticks and they make dummy nests. So for each one nest that, oh, see there's an unhatched cocoon of spiders. This one right here, that's unhatched spider eggs. So there's a few of them in there. Spiders seem to really like where a house wren has nested because they can they can put their egg clusters in among these pieces of branches. And so that would be uh, spider eggs. So we usually, I, I know in the past I have left it, but by gathering it, what we'll do is we'll just put this out of the rain, maybe in the biotope, and uh, we'll let the spiders emerge and later on we'll compost the rest. So I see that you got some wasp nests yeah. that were in there. We get several species, so we'll get most common here is tree swallows. We'll get house sparrows. House sparrows tend to be grassy, although it could be a little more rough grass than that. We definitely get a lot of house wren too, but house wren, they occupy a lot of nest boxes and only nest in one. Uh, bluebirds, we get regular a lot of, we have about three pairs nesting at any one time in the orchard in the spring. Nuthatch, white-breasted nuthatch, we get chickadees. These are the one and a half inch holes. And in the larger ones, which are two inch holes, we get starling and great crested flycatcher. In the big pine trees, we put the biggest nest boxes that will have three inch holes and that's for the kestrels which are back so they're going to start nesting and we also have them for the owls but the squirrels use those large nest boxes as well but then we do get like like jasmine was saying we get the wasps using them and we like wasps to use the nest box and we get bumblebees so if we find one that's absolutely filled right to the top and it's fluffy, usually it's a squirrel nest or a vole nest, then we leave them for bumblebees because the bumblebees will use those nest boxes. So you can do, you can put up a lot of nest boxes and you think, oh, they're not gonna all be taken, but give them a chance, let the populations build up. So if you have about, once you reach 50% occupancy, then you know you're at full capacity because most pairs, most birds take two nest boxes. So here, for example, you may get one bird using this one and they'll also defend the one that's right there. It's the same design, same size. So they would defend two nest boxes and that's why you'll get about 50% seem like they're used because they'll defend it. If something happens here, if a chipmunk comes and eats the eggs or if a snake went in and eats the eggs, then they'll simply recycle and start in that nest box. So having more than one is essential. If you ever put up one nest box and you're wondering why it's not working, because they don't have another one and they won't take that territory. So what would you say in conclusion? In conclusion, um, I would say I really like doing this because it's really like surprises all the time. It's like opening a gift almost, because you never know what's inside. I like, I like it either in school. <laughs> So that's it. You saw how to maintain the nest boxes and just get started. Now is still the time. Usually by early May, you wanna have your nest boxes up as much as possible in our climate, certainly if you're farther south, but there are second nests as well. So get doing, this is the time. And if you miss this year, hey, put it on the calendar for next year, but get some nest boxes, definitely get the birds. They're an important ally. And they're doing an important job. In our case, we no longer have any concerns about caterpillars, mainly because the birds do it all. So they are important and they're worth the effort to do a little bit of maintenance every few years, get the birds there, get them set up and get them working. Have a great week. See you next time. Bye. Hey, please subscribe and check out our latest video. Blue Jay?
chickadee, tree swallows, bluebird, morning dove, bluebird, tree swallow, blue jay, the same ones over and over. And they just keep calling.